Pooch night. Woof. <sighs> it's nearly Halloween. Nearly scary thing to think of is oh, Sonic Boom. <laughs> Okay, so thanks to the Dark Lord of Doom, I now have to review The Walking Dead Season 1 in 5 minutes or less. So, let's lay down some ground rules before we begin. Number 1. This is going to be a review of the story of the game. Reviewing the gameplay of a story-focused game is utterly pointless. Number 2. I'm going to review each episode individually, rather than reviewing the whole story as a whole. Okay, so now we have that sorted, let's get started! Let's start the timer. Our journey begins in the back of a police car as our hero Lee Everett is being transported to prison following conviction for murder. Seems pretty standard so far. No signs of zombies. Oh wait, watch out! Oops. Well, we either ran over a cripple or did some good by killing a walker. Our car then plummets down a steep cliff face and we fall unconscious. We then wake to find the officer who was driving dead outside the car. After inspecting his body, we have our first encounter with a walker. We successfully kill it and flee another group of walkers and arrive at a small suburban neighbourhood. We enter the nearest house to discover that a young child of eight, Clementine, had been hiding in her treehouse until her parents who had been away in Savannah returned home. Sadly, the chances of them coming back are slim, so after a brief encounter with another walker, we run into two countrymen and flee to their farm with Clementine. At the farm, we run into Kenny and his family, Catcher and Duck, don't ask. We get to know the family and end up getting invited along with them on their trip to Macon. But before we get the opportunity to plan in advance, a situation arises in Herschel, the owner of the farm, son gets bitten by walkers, leading to the guys getting kicked from the farm and flee to Macon. When we arrive in Macon, we get rescued from certain death by a group of survivors, Glenn, Carly, Doug, Larry and Lily. We get to learn that the pharmacy that they are holding out in belongs to Lee's parents, and we eventually have to loot his brother's dead body in order to get the key back to give Larry his heart medication. At the end of the episode, the zombies break into the pharmacy, and we must choose between Doug and Carly to save from the break-in. Naturally, I chose Doug because he's a legend. The gang then flees to a motel we visited earlier in the episode. And stop the timer! Wow, that was a lot of information to get through, but it's a pretty solid episode. It sets the story well and begins developing the characters and the relationships they develop with each other. For example, Clementine and Lee. I give this a 7 out of 10. Timer, go! It's been three months since the guys began living at the motel, and our story begins in the forest where new guy Mark, Lee and Kenny are hunting. They come across a group of survivors and Lee must choose between them, freeing one of them from a bear trap or leaving them behind. Either way, we pick up a new survivor, Ben. Back at the motel, we're given the task of rushing out food, which but does beg the question, do we do what's right or play favourites? Hint, it's play favourites. That is when the main element of the episode plot comes in. Two guys arrive at the motel offering food in exchange for fuel. They invite us to their farm. Lee, Doug and Mark head out to scope it out. After some conversation with the guys, Doug heads back to the motel to get the others, while Lee and Mark do some favours on the farm before ringing some bandits. Mark also gets injured. Back at the farm, the others arrive as Mark goes for some treat treatment on his shoulder. Ah, fuck. Before the farm plot continues any further, Danny, one of the brothers, asks Lee to help him scope out a bandit camp, only to discover a crazy woman who had stolen Clementine's hat. Danny then shoots her to death. At the farm, Kenny is getting increasingly suspicious of the St. John family, and asks Lee to help him unlock the door at the back of the barn. When it is unlocked, we discover a human slaughterhouse. 
Lee, in a mad rush, and runs up to the house and discovers a semi-conscious Mark without his legs. Uh-oh. Lee rushes downstairs and stops Clementine and the others from eating the food that was prepared by the St. John's, suspecting it to be Mark's leg meat. Everyone gets knocked out and it's up to Clementine, Lee and Kenny to escape the meat locker they'd been trapped in. After murdering Larry to stop them from becoming a walker, they escape the locker and proceed to murder Danny, Andy and Brenda, in order to save Catcher and Duck. The episode ends as you come across a car full of supplies in the forest. It's up to you whether or not to steal it. Expect consequences later on. Stop. The. Timer. Please. Well, uh, that, that's something pretty good. Maybe not. Ah! Oof. This is tiring. This is easily the most drama-filled episode and had me speechless from that epic climax. Bravo. Our relationship with Clementine and the other survivors is also tested in this episode, as choices that affect them have to be made. This episode gets a very, very, very solid 9 out of 10 from me. Now let's get back to the timer. Go! Our episode begins as Lee must discover why the medicine stock has been declining. We eventually discover it was one of the survivors, and bandits end up attacking the motel to get more medicine. With the help of Lily, Lee takes out the bandit, before long, the zombies break in and bite Duck, so we are forced to flee in Kenny's RV. In a mid-driving showdown, Lily puts the blame on Ben, we stop the RV and the showdown gets even more intense. As Lily gets more and more frustrated, she shoots at Ben, but he hides behind Doug, forcing him to be shot. Doug, no! no! We eventually leave Doug's dead body and Lily behind as we set off for Savannah. After a short period of driving, we come across a train in the way of the road. We eventually get the train moving, not, but not before Doug's condition deteriorates and Lee has to kill him. Catcher also kills herself under the strain of the situation. Okay. On the train we meet a homeless man called Chuck who convinces us to prepare Clementine for the war of zombies and the harshness and cruelty of it. Our train journey comes to a halt as an oil tanker is hanging precariously over the side of a bridge. With the help of two new survivors we get it cut down, but not after Clementine's run with a walk on the train station. The episode ends with survivors escaping a horde of zombies, but Omid gets his leg injured. Lee then finds out that someone has been communicating with Clementine on the walkie talkie. But who? Jesus Christ, stop the fucking timer! Okay, almost done. I'm not sure if I'll do this in five minutes, but I'll give it a bloody good go. Ha! <laughs> Get it? Bloody? Zombies? This episode is probably the weakest so far, but still manages to engross me and I feel real emotion when the characters run into conflict or a dilemma. And Jesus, that horde scene at the end. Wow. But, then, yeah, but yet again, as a whole, this episode wasn't exactly the best, so I give it a pretty average 6.5 out of 10. Now start the timer! <laughs> episode 4 picks up where episode 3 left off. The gang arrives in Savannah and are forced to flee from a gang of zombies after an unknown person rings a church bell. Kenny's plan is to flee by boats, so as the others rest in the nearby house, Kenny and Lee head to the waterfront to find a boat but have no luck. They then get confronted by Molly, a young female survivor who aids them in escaping a group of walkers. It turns out that she was ringing the bells in order to distract walkers. As they escape, Lee falls down into the sewer and must escape. After navigating the sewer system, he comes across a group of survivors hiding in a bunker underneath the general hospital. Lee then recruits the help of Vernon, a doctor, to come and aid only the back of the house. Clementine then goes missing, only to find her in the shed along with the boat. The boat needs fuel and a battery, so Kenny and the group hatch a plan to invade Crawford in order to get some supplies. With the help of Vernon, they arrive at Crawford and discover it had been taken over by walkers. In a series of small puzzles, the group get what they need and get out. Although Ben admits to giving the bandits the supplies, you must choose between letting Ben live or die. Back at the house, Vernon helps Omid and suggests to Lee that he should take care of Clementine. Lee refuses. After a brief nap, Clementine goes missing again and Lee heads out to find her, only to discover her hat on the pavement outside. Lee then gets bitten. In a matter of urgency, Lee and the group head down to Vernon's bunker, only to discover it empty. The walkie-talkie then communicates with Lee, and tells Lee that Clementine's life depends on the next words he says. Done. Wow, what an episode. The heist, the climax, the everything. It was terrific from start to finish. It also hand handled the Lee bite situation extremely well, also acting as a build-up to the finale. It set in stone the characters and strained their relationships to the max. Bring on the next episode. And wow, this episode really impressed me. The first episode that's really, really, really had a good effect on me. So I'm going to give this a very, very, very high 9 out of 10. Well done, Telltale. The episode begins in the bunker as Lee starts drifting in and out of consciousness. The group contemplate cutting his infected arm off to prolong the infection, but Lee decides against it. They then head up to the roof of the hospital in order to get some bearings. Lee figures out that Clementine is being held captive by the mysterious man 
on the end of the talkie at the Marsh House, the Hotel Clementine was looking for. Then remember Molly's tactic and ring the bell on the roof to distract the walkers. The gang then climbed down the side of the hospital and make a run for it to the house. They arrived to find a be beaten up Kenny and the boat gone. He explains that Vernon and his crew had beaten him, beat him up and stolen the boat. They all decide to help find Clementine. After walkers break into the house, they begin using the rooftops to reach the Marsh House. On the way, Ben falls from the roof. Kenny climbs down to help him, but both end up getting ambushed by walkers. Meaning it's up to Lee, Omid and Krista to rescue Clementine. They eventually arrive at Marsh House and Lee tells the others to find a boat, and he pursues Clementine and the captor alone. When he arrives at Clementine's room, he discovers a middle-aged man had captured her. We then learn that the captor is the owner of the car that the group stole supplies from at the start of the game. He decides to kill Lee, but not before Clementine hacks his shoulder with a cleaver to help Lee. Lee then strangles the man, and Clementine and Lee escape to the streets. On the street, Clementine sees his zombified parents, and then Lee falls unconscious again. Lee, realising he was about to turn, begs Clementine to leave him to find Omida Krista. In a, an extremely emotional scene, the player must choose whether to kill Lee or stop him to stop him turning, or let him become a walker before Lee says his goodbye and Clementine flees. In a post credit scene, Clementine is seen running through a field and spots two survivors. And... stop. Wow. I'm an emotional wreck after that. There's no way anybody wouldn't cry at that ending. I was in tears. Telltale did an amazing job with this episode and it really tugged at the heartstrings. The decisions she had to make made you feel like you were Lee. Actually really motherfucking Lee. And it made the Clementine goodbye even more heartbreaking. Rest in peace, Lee. And wow, that was just absolutely incredible. A very, very, very deserved 10 out of 10. Bravo. So, the story of this game is magnificent and never, ever fails to amaze me. The branching story paths and overarching parental relationship plot really make this game an unmissable experience. So as a whole, 8 out of 10. So I hope you found this review really, really useful and I've got some explaining to do to the Dark Lord of Doom. So once again, I will see you all in the next video. Pooch night, over and out. Bye! You failed, you blithering idiot! <laughs>